Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself and Mars, as always, I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Before I get into today's proceedings, do forgive me if I don't sound completely on top of my game. I am rather tired. Yesterday I attended Incineration Festival in London, which was fantastic, but not a whole lot of sleep was had, so just bear with me today, guys, is all I will say. However, we're going to kick things off today with a bit of an update for Ryzen 3000. So, what we have is there was recently an update by AMD on Agisa for their motherboard partners as BIOSes, and these BIOS revisions reveal that AMD has actually moved to the second stepping, that being B0 of Ryzen 3000. And what does that actually mean, I hear you ask? Well, obviously it means they've revised the design, but it also points to them being on track for release in the coming months, and this does line up with the expected launch date of Ryzen 3000. Now, just to give credit where credit is absolutely due, this was all thanks to the research of Komachi on Twitter, whose name probably is familiar to you because they've been responsible for some nice leaks in the past. So, thanks to their research, we know that the BIOSes will contain support for the Ryzen 3000 uh, series, and this is part of an ASUS BIOS update that reads, quote, update aim for combo pi 0.0.7.2a, for next-gen processors and improved CPU compatibility. And further digging revealed that the B0 stepping, which again is a new stepping which points to the launch we are pretty much expecting. Now, what is also rather interesting is that ASUS have not, as of yet at least, updated all of their motherboards with the new BIOS, but it updated some boards with the A320X, 370B450 and B350 chipsets, which is a good sign for compatibility. So all in all, this pretty much points to the launch we are expecting, as I've already said. We still don't have a concrete launch date officially from AMD, but we've heard various rumours which all point to the same sort of time frame, and this does line up with it. Obviously, we will have to wait and see what AMD says for the actual release date, but this does point to Ryzen 3000 not being that far away at all. So, with all of that said about AMD, let's move over to Nvidia now. So the first Nvidia thing I have for you today, as I do have a couple, is that they have actually been sued for patent infringement by a subsidiary, excuse me, of Xpericorp, a company that licenses intellectual property, and they have filed a suit against NVIDIA in the US District Court of Delaware. And the case is based upon alleged violation of five of their patents for technology used in gaming and supercomputer GPUs. Now, there was an official statement made by the CEO of Xpericorp, John Kirchner, in their Q1 2019 earnings call. And he said, quote, In addition, today we filed a lawsuit against NVIDIA for patent infringement. We believe that NVIDIA is using our patent semiconductor technology in certain of its CPUs and processors, and we have been speaking with NVIDIA for several years about taking a patent license. We ultimately could not reach an agreement, and we felt that we needed to take this action to defend our intellectual property rights. We filed the case in Delaware Federal Court asserting five patents. Now, all five of the patents basically boil down to semiconductor designs. Now, NVIDIA does not spin its own silicon. It obviously, co as well, like with AMD and whoever else, contracts with other companies to manufacture its chips, such as, for example, TSMC. However, Xperia is saying that this falls at NVIDIA's doorstep because they are obviously responsible for their architectural designs. Now, what needs to be taken into consideration here as well is that Xperia have actually won settlement against both Broadcom and Samsung about these same patents. Now, unfortunately, there's no mention of the proposed damages or royalty demands that Xperia are actually asking for here from NVIDIA as of yet. So it will be really interesting to see how this plays out. As I've said, they've literally defended these patents against people like Samsung and Broadcom. When this company is quite small in comparison, they have a cap of $1.2 billion, which, you know, not exactly going to find it on the back of the sofa cushions, but compared to NVIDIA's over $100 billion market cap, it is tiny in comparison. So despite that fact, they have successfully defended against people like Samsung. So while that's no means done and dusted, we should just consider this solved, it does lean heavily in their favour, I suppose you could argue. So I'm definitely going to be watching this one, seeing what the results will be, and of course the royalty demands or the damages or what have you, however they end up working it out that Nvidia actually have to end up paying here. 
But I promise you multiple NVIDIA news pieces and I am a woman of my word. And we have a bit of an update for some security things to do with NVIDIA having been patched out. Anywho, so they've issued a security update to fix three high and medium severity security issues in the GPU display driver that could lead to several nasty things that you don't want happening like say code execution, escalation of privileges, information disclosure and code execution on vulnerable Windows machines. Now if you want to know the nitty gritty details of each of the vulnerabilities and how they can be exploited and all that sort of thing, there is a really nice article from bleepingcomputer.com who I am sourcing for this information and you can find all of the details in the description below this video is a link of course and there is a bunch of information including the description of each attack, how NVIDIA actually decides the severity of the security risk, all that sort of stuff. Now, although the flaws do require local access, as with most things, there are ways around that. You know, if a would-be attacker drops malicious tools through whatever means they can find, they can still potentially take advantage of this if you're running an unpatched GPU display driver version. And as such, NVIDIA are advising everyone to update their drivers as soon as possible. And there is a link to the NVIDIA driver downloads page in the description below this video. So might as well install it, guys. If you haven't done it already, I will be doing that myself momentarily after I'm done recording this video because I am myself running an NVIDIA card at present. So let's move on to our final topic of today, shall we, which is once again regarding memory. And this is all thanks to a report from DigiTimes, which again is going to be linked in the description below this video. So various Taiwanese memory module makers did unfortunately show mixed performance in the first quarter of 2019. I have discussed previously the sharp price falls for both DRAM and NAND flash and you can go watch my video from a couple of days ago if you want to get the skinny on what I'm talking about there. The focus of today's segment however is that they expect this price fall to actually slow down and shipments to pick up gradually in the second quarter as they are all preparing for the third quarter which they are expecting to be the high season. And as I discussed previously they are expecting DRAM and NAND contract prices to hit the lowest points it's been at in quite some time in the second quarter, but we're also now expecting it to rebound in the third quarter. So yes, we are going to be, well, expecting to see, should I say, this decline, but we're going to be seeing them rebound fairly shortly in the third quarter. So, that is me done for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and bearing with me, as I'm not my usual sparkling self today, but I'll be back at it after a good night's rest, I assure you. But thanks again for watching, your support is highly appreciated, and I'll see you next time.